Hi, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in to Sip on This with CNC, Connie and Corey. How are you, Connie? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How was your weekend? It was wonderful. So what you do? What was it? Was it? it? It was Juneteenth. How yeah, Juneteenth? Yes. Was, oh, cheers to that. Oh, cheers. We're celebrating. Celebrating. I know. You know, that's the first holiday that they made a federal holiday since Martin Luther King. Okay. So that's kind of a, a nice, awesome it's really fact. Special. Yeah, because I mean, being African American, you know, I grew up not knowing our history. I didn't watch it. I know, I know, but it's really great. And I had to do research yeah. and really look into what Juneteenth meant. Can you believe that for two years, slavery was abolished and half of this country did not know no, that didn't. slavery was know. not the, the bop, uh, uh, you, know, you know. They didn't want them to know because the people in the North were free. And of course, right. in the South, they want them to continue to be enslaved. Right. So they, they duped them, how they say. They I know they do, I think. But I so. think also in that time, obviously, they didn't have the internet and phones. Right. So they say that it took that long for that information to travel to Texas. Um, so to like inform them that slavery was, um, you know, no more. But um, what did you do? Well, I went to a barbecue. Oh, you did. And then I went to an event where they it actually explained everything in detail. Oh wow! Okay. About June. Okay. So that, and there were a lot of young people there, mm -hmm. uh, which you know a lot of them don't know anything about it at all because they don't teach it in school. They don't. We they don't want to know. They don't want the African American children to know, and they definitely don't want the white kids to know. I know. Because you know, they fit in schools now. You go to school with everybody. Right. And you mm -hmm. you know. Do you so, think that? society would be different today if we had learned more about our history? I think so. You, do you think, think that so. we would have I, I the think. still the racism or do you think that would be, a, I mean, I think racism always would be there always because that's be part of our, uh, the systemic, threat of our, systemic, the systemic, the systemic they so say. It's gonna be here. It's, it's going, going right, away. I think because it's ingrained in our history and into our, our, our you know, the foundation of what this country is, but do you think, though? No, I think knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And I know if you ever hear that, that really is a powerful thing. When you have knowledge, there's nothing you can't do. That is you're true. aware of what's going on. But they don't even have that. They're not giving them the opportunity to have that. Mm -hmm. And I think when they made a big change, right. how, you know, how the world is, basically, mm -hmm. you know. But you know, you'd be surprised. I'm not, you know, going off the fact that, you know, Afro-Americans were enslaved, right. but a lot of other cultures were enslaved as well. I know, and that's the thing. I think that this inherently, our country only celebrated certain figures, certain facts, mm -hmm. and I think that we aren't really knowledgeable in our own history. And you'd be surprised, too. You know what? A lot of other countries are knowledgeable in our history more than we, we are. We are. You know, when I went I to London, they know more about yeah. our history, but they also, some of my Caucasian friends that live in London, mm -hmm. they don't understand, although there is discrimination there, oh, yes. but course. they don't understand. Of course. It, I think ours is a more, in a different context. It was and brutal. It's brutal. I it was brutal. Right. I mean, it was brutal. I mean, anytime it's, you bust up a family, you take a baby, and, and sometimes uh, with the shows, sometimes you see a movie, uh, the butler, for example. Right. When you saw how the man shot his father right in front, in front of him, him. and right. then proceeded to uh, uh, well, rape the mother, you know, or, right. or, or however it was done, rape first, murder second, but right, it, it but right that, in front of him. And I think that so, we've only saw that side. Even media has only shown that brutal side. But we need to know about like this Black Wall Street. Yes, you know that is amazing, and, and we, we have that going on now. At for that real. time, we do, but it, it's sad that we that was horrible. they took that every time we tried. Rosewood, it was in Rosewood. Rosewood. We tried to move forward and establish ourselves. Some radical group takes it away, I do. and I just you every know every time we get something, something there's nothing really that we don't have that they don't want. want. But, and the thing about it, you you know, black is so bad. So if black is so bad, why do you want what we have? Well, I was going to, I'm so glad you mentioned that I mean, because I wanted to ask you, you know, though, although, you know, I don't want to make it too heavy because this is a, more about celebration and that we do have this federal holiday now, but do you think the racists 
we'll celebrate this holiday now that it's a federal holiday. She's my teacher. <laughs> Hell to the no. Well, they go, so you Who mean they're going to go to work? And you know what? Now that they, they get the day off, they're going to go to work? But check this out. <laughs> Do you know most people, the majority they were saying are going to get paid. There were a few um, companies, I don't know if it was Nike, I think Target. I don't want to right, you're not say sure because I'm not sure, right. but I just recently read about my memory. So anyway, so a few companies are going to pay. Now, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if the federal government's going to pay. But, but you know it's funny. There are some private-owned companies that are going to pay. But so I didn't realize that it actually is a day off. No, Monday it is. It's a, a federal holiday. holiday. But my thing, the funny part is that the, those that have yeah. some racial issues, they're going to celebrate the day. And that um, makes no, no, me no, no, no. like don't, that. Don't get it. Just, <laughs> they're not going to celebrate. celebrate. Well, not celebrate. And I'm thinking that we... But they're going to take advantage of the day. No, they're not going to celebrate the day. Well, they did celebrate the day. But right. what I have to say is this. I just pray and hope everybody was really careful. I hope nothing major happens. Right. Because um, this is sometimes opportunity for people who are so against us having anything to do something. Right. Well, so mm -hmm. uh, will there be an alert? Will people be on alert? Um, well, I didn't hear anything. So right. I didn't hear anything. But I so, hope not. So far, so good. Do you I think... think Though, do we still, because we are trying to, you know, establish unity, I mean, yes, this is really important to have what's called Black Independence Day, uh -huh. but does it still segregate us? What do you think? That's a funny question, because you are segregated. We're not a whole. It's like everybody has their own holidays, their own this, their own that. Okay, so recently we had the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Right. I'm not... Well, you know, but and we have a game parade, right? The, we have all of these. But right? Everybody is generally allowed to go down Fifth Avenue or down in Chelsea. They're oh, they're out and about in this large city. When we have our parade, it's on Seventh Avenue <laughs> from a Street <laughs> and maybe to a Fourth Street. Why we can't be on Fifth Avenue? That's what I want to know. Somebody right. please ask that question for me. And if that, any of you know, let me know. And that, because why can't we? Everybody else is on Fifth Avenue. And that goes to where we get a little. But we don't get the no. whole package. I mean, well, I mean, you say we got a holiday where everybody getting paid. Black but, mean, right, right, exactly. So you're all getting paid I because mean, of our holiday. I mean, do you know? Since we are from different generations, do you see a change? I mean, because I come up from a different. I can't. I grew. Up, I'm an '80s baby. So, from your perspective, do you see a change? I see a change in terms of to Martin Luther Day okay. and now this day. Okay. But otherwise, there really isn't a change. But the best part is I've never seen racism. I never was affected by it because no. I lived in the North. I was uh, born right, in the right, 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 right. And mm -hmm. I was also born and raised in Harlem. Okay. But you are surrounded by people of, of your life. Right. So yeah, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. have that problem. So. Okay. And see, I grew Except up. for, you know, you watch TV, you know, Martin Luther King yeah. got killed, or right. Martin Luther Kennedy got killed. But I didn't experience that. If somebody said you call me a nigga, or you know that, that that didn't have to deal with that. And I grew up in like like this. I grew up. I was born in seventy two, but the eighties. My I grew up on the Lower East Side, but that was usually during that Bohemian time yes. where you know everybody was collective. I grew around. I went to Catholic schools. Yeah. I ain't ever experienced racism until I was in my thirties, and then when I and I, it devastated. Because and what way did, did you because I experienced it at work and I had to sue a company. I did win oh, for discrimination, okay. Okay. and I had, as a black man and a gay man, I had two whammies. Yes, and it was a straight Caucasian man who was really harassing me and making my life hell. And but what happened? Why it devastated me? Because it, I was I grew up in this bubble where everyone liked me, I guess my personality, I am, I will say that I realized after George Floyd had passed that I did have a privilege, I did speak a certain way, I have a lighter skin, skin tone, Here we go. I'm gay, another topic, another topic. <laughs> but those are real true issues yeah. that I then, when George Floyd, I was like, wait a minute, and then I, in the gay community, it's heavily racial. Uh, it's very whitewashed, mm -hmm. and I was growing up in this environment where I thought my mother raised me. At, you are like everyone; exactly. you can achieve anything and everything. But then, when you hit the real world, 
I was getting hit with all these things and I was like, wait a minute. And then, but I'm very grateful for those moments. You know why? Because now I appreciate being black. I love being black. It made me appreciate the strength that comes from being African American because we have so many struggles. Right, and we are very strong people, extremely strong and extremely smart. And I think that's why they want to suppress us quite a bit. Uh, the majority of things that were created were created by black men. I believe the first, uh, was it the heart surgery? Mm -hmm. black and then Central Park. Uh, black did black you know that Central Park was owned by a black individual? Mm -hmm. And then they were, yeah, Central Park. I'm not surprised. Um, Central Park was, okay. and you can look that up. And that was part of, in the beginning, it was migrated where African Americans were kind of living and um, harvesting, and then it was taken. I'm not surprised. That's just it. Everything we have is always taken. I mean, why do you think that might, is? That's just kidding. Here's another topic. I don't know if you ladies out there realize that. <laughs> there are more big booty white girls out here. <laughs> <laughs> they have took the moment. We can't even have that. But, I mean, come on, really? But that, but it goes to show you that you know we talk about that where our culture is mm -hmm. the root of this uh, foundation of the country okay. and. Now we have white rappers, Caucasian rappers. We have, you know, we have a pleather. They take, I think it's, you know, sometimes you may say, well, it's an, like, you know, a, what well, is it they say is an honor or a, that's a, that's a that's compliment? That's because it is. You know, that's what we need to say, say to everybody right about now. And this is take to them, listen, think about it. If everything we have, they want to take and they want to do, that's a compliment. You're honoring me. Because you want to be me. They don't want to, they don't like black people. They, they end up in the sun, straight and everything on them. Mm -hmm. They can't wait to get to the beach. But I think that that goes to show that for us as um, minorities and African Americans that we need to join forces in a positive way. Ourselves. And love ourselves, but also and join, love, each other. love each other in a positive way. And yes, those are issues. But if we turn that around, and say, oh, we're flattered by it, that. Uh, yes, company. that's right. I guarantee they'll stop. Stop complaining. They'll stop. Stop complaining. I guarantee they'll that's stop. Right. I think they'll. It won't that's happen as complaint. much. That it's, it's almost it's kind of hard though. Let it roll off your back. Stop right. asking for the forty acres in a mule. Right. And be glad what you got because we have so many successful black people. Yes. And so many rich successful black people. Yes. We have billionaires among us. Exactly. You know. So um. And that's in Maybe recent that. years. I mean, if you think about slavery, it's not yeah. that long ago. No. Even segregation. We're still enslaved in a way. We really are, but I mean, we've come, but like, that's what I was asking. Do you think we've come a long way? We have in terms of, like I said, there, there's a lot of billionaires, millionaires, zillionaires among us, but there's still, you know, the masses who don't have. There's so many people that are homeless. Sometimes I think of that as a form of safety. When I go outside and I'm walking around in different areas, you see people under the most horrible situations. They're in doorways. They're laying on the street. They're on the park benches. Mm -hmm. Is that some form of, I don't know, slavery keep us down? I say this because every time you drive down any block, anywhere, every borough, they're building buildings. And I mean, so you're building buildings that nobody can afford to live in. So, Carly, I mean, like you just brought up a point I mean, that we're backstage. I mean, not nobody. Right. <laughs> I mean, everybody is backstage. Oh, why are they homeless people? Why are they homeless? If you have people? all these masses of buildings, I mean, here's buildings. That, okay, here's an example. And anybody go there, like it's like 110, 112. Mm -hmm. This building is massive. I just passed by it, and I said to myself, is that like a prison? Prison? It's so big, it's just all the way around. Who's going to live there? Who are they building it for? I said, no, that building is so big that it can take half the people up the streets in New York City. That's how I see it. That's right. how big the building is. It's between Park and Madison. Check it out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what's that? What are all your buildings for? I know. And I, what I was going to ask you is, you know, our culture is so rich, right? And you, you look beautiful. By the oh, way. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, matching purse. Yeah. She's a deep for everybody. Yeah, um, right. She has her glasses. Yes, I only hang out with Jesus. So anyway, so Connie, I mean, you know, you were talking about being imprisoned as far as slavery and stuff. You know, we were backstage, everybody, and we were talking about her, you know, 
braids and stuff. Oh, and yeah. so it's about that. you know, now they're not supposed to do it. But why do you think certain cultures or ethnic backgrounds are uncomfortable when we're celebrating our own heritage? Why? Because we look so beautiful. Yeah, but why I do mean, you they, think they, other they, cultures... They can't handle it. They can't deal with it. So they prefer, and, and I'm going to say because I do it too, and if you all have ever seen my Instagram or seen me over here someplace else, I was cascading with this long wig, wearing it for years, you know, this blonde straight hair. And you know that's not my, it's my hair because I bought it, but you know what? Right. Why? I, why I, I liked it. Hair? I looked good about that. So I think that we feel like we, you know, need to look that way sometimes to make to it be comfortable. Accepted. To make yeah. it comfortable. I say right. comfortable. I don't even say it. I think you accepting think, is the wrong yeah. word. It's, like, it's to make another person comfortable. And we're all doing it. We got this long hair, the hair is down here. So then long. people getting blue. I like contacts and stuff. And I mean, yes, yeah, fashion wise and, you know, it's you much, experiment, much. but I get nervous if it, it, I get nervous if it's being done to be to to make someone else come right no but I, you know to be honest for all the ladies I, I got like I said ladies I'm doing the same thing um we're doing it because we want to we like it and I guess we're comfortable with it mm -hmm. and they all look beautiful it's nothing no, wrong yeah. with it I'm not mm -hmm. knocking it I'm just saying I just want to make sure they're doing it to make themselves happy and comfortable not to satisfy anybody else just satisfy yourself so if that's mm -hmm. if you like it I like it Right. I love it. I love it. No, you look beautiful. It Thank celebrates you. the culture. Um, and it's just, I think you even dressing like this for our younger generation, it gives someone of, a, a, you know, an African American youth an idea to say, oh, I want to look up something. You know, like do it, I, you know, being of a certain age. I feel a little embarrassed that I don't know a lot about the African American so culture, true. and you know because we weren't taught, we have a, a skewed idea um, of what the African Americans are, and we come from a very powerful race uh, culture, and even in slavery, the White House was built by African Americans. Exactly, and so. I think we have to change our idea of slavery and just try to empower it to some way. I mean, not to change it mm -hmm. and look at the travesty and the horrific idea of it, but also celebrate that the, the, the White House was built by our ancestors. Here's another thing I want to remember. Don't forget Madden. C. Walker. Uh, right, Madison Walker. And, if it wasn't for her, y'all wouldn't be, wouldn't be cascading. But you know, it. Rosa Parks wasn't the first African American who didn't sit in the back of the bus. Who was the first? I can't remember the name, oh, unfortunately. You all can look up. But what happened was, is she was lighter skinned. She was more acceptable. But she was a, still black. But she was still black. Mm -hmm. But that's why she got the recognition. As Rosa, did. As Rosa Parks got it, but it, well, she we, wasn't, really we wasn't the first. Still respect and but love Of course, Rosa. of course. We're gonna but, give her props. But, of them. course, but that goes to show you we are not educated in our history, and I think the importance of Black Independence Day, Juneteenth, is yes, we're gonna celebrate. Yes, we go out and drinking barbecue, but, but I think it's important that you take everybody in your family, take a moment, print something out, sit around the table, talk about um, powerful black um, businesses or what happened in the past so that we can slowly educate ourselves, you know, on um, our, our power that is slow, sometimes taken away from us because we lack the knowledge. Exactly. Knowledge is power, y'all. Knowledge is power. And, and come to think about it, I didn't tell y'all what y'all celebrate while we celebrate. <laughs> so today yeah. we're having... All right, oh my God, I totally oh, forgot. So this went so right so on so in. So All so right. I, listen, I can't say it. Well, bird day. It's bird day. Bird day um, the yeah. bird day. And it's the rosé version. It's the rosé. They also have a regular version, you know. It tastes The delicious. white. They also have the white, but this is the rosé. The rosé. And it's great for summertime. 
summertime. So but if when, you're celebrating anything. Right, but if so. you're celebrating Juneteenth, we recommend the rosé. Oh, Cheers. Cheers. Oh. And remember, everybody, we um, appreciate you. Uh, this is more about you than us. We want to just show you that whatever generation you're from, that you can laugh together, um, have different ideas and opinions, but you still can get along and have fun. We also want to say thank you. Our first video has been really growing and um, getting a lot of views, so we really appreciate that. We want to say remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so that you know when we are in the subscribe buttons below. Just go ahead and subscribe and at the end of the video, you do get our email address, so we want you to start sending us some questions so Connie and I don't have to be sitting up there trying to figure out what we're going to talk about. So, we want to say thank you, and remember to live colorfully. Thank you so much.